Hi, there are a number of strategies that can help you with the math SATs. And this is my strategy number two, picking values for unknowns. So some math SAT problems get complicated with a number of different variables. But rather than dealing with those variables, there's some certain occasions where we can take and pick values for those variables to make this problem a lot simpler. I picked out three examples here from the official um, practice test from the college boards. Let's take a look at these three examples. Alright, so let's take a look at the first problem here. And when solving a problem like this, we may know how to solve the problem. Um, but, so there's three advantages of picking values for unknowns. One is if you don't know how to solve the problem, it still gives you a way to be able to answer the question. But even if you know how to solve the problem, picking numbers sometimes might be a lot quicker than going through and solving the problem. And then it also gives us a way, if you've solved the problem but you're really not sure if that's the answer, then it also gives you a great way to check your answer as well. So you want to pick numbers that are easy to work with. So right here, B is being divided by 2. So I'm going to pick an even number for B because that's going to make it a lot easier. So for B, I'm going to pick 4. And for A, let's pick 3. So now let's put it into this equation. So 3 plus 4 over 2 is 2 squared is 25. So we're looking for which one of these answers gets us 25 when we plug in 3 and 4. So let's take a look at the first one. a squared is 9. b squared over 2 is 16 over 2 or 8 which is 17. So we know a is not an answer. a squared is 9. b squared is 16 over 4 is 4 or 13. And we, so we know B is not an answer. For C, we get A times B is 12 over 2 is 6. B squared is 16 over 2 is 8. This gets us 23. So C is not an answer. So D is going to be our answer. And we can go and put these in just to double check and make sure as well. So A squared is going to be 9. A times B is going to be 12 and b squared is 16 divided by 4 is 4. Add these up and we get 25 and so d is our answer. Now I want to do another one with this example. I want to give you a warning in that sometimes we don't want to pick numbers that are that are too simple. We want to avoid picking numbers like 1 and 0 because sometimes that gets us in a, into a problem. So let's say instead of picking 3 and 4, say, let's say we picked 1 and 4. And let's go through the example again. So we get 1 plus 2 squared or 3 squared, so we're trying to get 9. So now let's plug into this first one. We get a squared is 1 plus b squared over 2 is 16 over 2, which is 8, and we get 9. So there's two warnings here. One is to not use numbers that are so simple. And then number two is don't pick the first one you get. Because if you're picking the numbers, you might have picked numbers that are going to work for two different equations. So you would have to keep going and you would say, okay, well, this one is going to be 1 plus 16 over 4. So that doesn't work. This is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 8. So that doesn't work. But when you get down to this one, you're going to get 1 plus 4 times 1 is 4. 16 over 4 is 4. And this also equals 9. So when we get this kind of situation where we get two things that it could possibly be, then we just have to pick a new set of numbers and then recheck these two. We don't have to recheck B and C. Once we get one that doesn't work for these, these are out for good. So if you do get something where the numbers work for two of them, then pick another set of numbers and then go and check these two. And then only one of those is going to work with your new set of numbers. All right, let's take a look at the second problem here. 
So on the second problem here, it's a little bit different because we can't pick just any numbers. We're going to have to pick numbers that make this true. So I'm going to pick numbers, let's see, so 2a over b has to equal 1 over 2. So if I pick 8 for b, to make this a half, 2a has to be 4. So then a is going to be 2. So I let a be decided by what I picked for b. Then to do the value of b over a, just go 8 over 2, which is 4, and d is your answer. So that might be a lot quicker. The other way to do it would be to cross multiply and then solve for b over a. Okay, and the last one we're going to take a look at here. We've got Sam driving a certain number of miles. Kara is driving twice as far as him. And Darren is doing 20 fewer miles. So we can just assume a number of miles. So I'm going to say, let's say Sam did 100. 100 is a nice, easy number to work with. Also, when you're doing percentages, 100 is a great number to work. There's not percentages here, but if you do have a problem with percentages, I usually pick 100 because it's very easy to work with. So Sam drove 100 miles. That means Kara is driving twice as far, 200 miles. And Darren is 20 less than Kara, so 180. And the question is saying how many, in terms of M, which is in terms of what Sam drove, how many miles did Darren drive? So we know that in this example, with these numbers that we picked, Darren is 180. So we're trying to find out which one of these equals 180. So let's plug in 100 and figure out which one equals 180. So 2 times 100 is 200 plus 20. That's not 180. 2 times 100 is 200 minus 20 is 180, so it looks like that's the answer. But it, we're going to just quickly check the others just to make sure. So 100 divided by 2 is 50 plus 20. That's not the answer. 100 plus 20 divided by 2 is 60. That's not the answer. And 100 divided by 2 is 50 minus 20. That's not the answer. So we get our answer is B. And like I said, even if you set up the equation and you just weren't too sure, you could put in the numbers and double check as well. So that's how we use picking values for unknowns to help us either double check or solve quicker or solve something that we didn't know how to solve. Thanks for watching and if you have an SAT coming up, good luck. I'm going to continue to add SAT material. So if you'd like to subscribe right up here, you can get notification of when new material comes out. And I've got some more stuff for you to watch right here. Thanks again for watching and please come back soon.